Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is the first time that I'm out here formally playing shows with Neon Indian. I played like nine shows as Vega, and it's so funny because like that was the most strenuous like show boot camp I've ever experienced, and I told myself like never again. That was so exhausting. And then um, you know I told myself this year just like all right, just play like four shows, just the four that matter, and just have fun with it the rest of the week. And then now I realize that I'm doing two bands, uh, so I ended up kind of averaging out to like eight or nine anyways. Uh, but you know I think I've gotten used to it after after tour, so it'll still be awesome. Um, well, I think it was really just like a difference in approach, you know, like I had gotten kind of burnt out um, on, on slaving so much over the over particular production tediums because I think that, you know, part of writing uh, the Vega EP was learning a lot about the medium that I was trying to tap into, which, you know, also kind of came with a lot of like kind of more studio formalities that I wasn't used to and, and I kind of I kind of got burnt out on it like right as it, uh, right as I finished it, so then almost as a direct reaction, um, I had written this song, Should've Taken Ash With You, you know, just for my friend Alicia and, um, I kind of just came to the conclusion that I like I was trying to rewrite it as a Vegas song and it wasn't working out and I kind of came to the conclusion that um, that song basically existed in the, incar the the exact incarnation in which it needed to and I didn't need to do anything to it and if anything I should start writing more songs in that vein because I wrote that song in like six or seven hours you know it's just like really immediate thing that just happened the ideas were all there and I just laid it out you know and and uh, I decided to uh, let that approach um, sort of repeat itself over the course of a couple of weeks and never really spend more than like two days on a given song and constantly be trying to work towards the next potential possible goal and not really let the production get in the way of the songwriting you know it's really just like throw some song ideas out there and don't even worry about fleshing them out too much right now just write them and it was it was very liberating you know like I I, I had never really had an experience where I, I wrote that much material within such a condensed amount of time you know it's, it would always be like weeks of just like alright you know like having these like internal monologues about how I should EQ my drums and, and, and you know a lot of song ideas would die in that process so I learned a lot from that. I had always been sending my stuff to Gorilla vs. Bear because you know I, I love what Chris does and, and he's always been really supportive right from the get-go with Ghost Hustler and uh, um, he was just the first guy I thought to, to send it to you know and, and um, I mean I didn't have like a specific plan or anything I didn't even know I was gonna be performing it live until I started seeing that you know that sort of interest being generated there and I, I sort of thought like I had to look at it from the perspective of like well if I wanted to see Neon Indian live you know as an objective listener what would I want to see on stage you know like what would I want to see happening do I want to see you know a guy with long curly hair shredding on a guitar wearing you know some crazy furry jacket like like Ronnie did <laughs> on Jimmy Fallon it's like yeah absolutely that's exactly what I want to go out and see and and, um, and it's sort of just I sort of built it from there you know it's this really weird idiosyncratic improvisation for like six months one thing after the next and, and I guess the circumstances were right for it yeah well I mean that's kind of the funny thing about it you know is that I feel like at least any of the sampled elements of the album, I mean, were definitely, the only real reference points I had were stuff like, you know, from Stone Store Records, you know, like listening to like, like Mad Villainy was one of my favorite albums in high school, and, and I, you know, I remember listening to it pretty relentlessly, and, uh, and, and just being completely mesmerized by some of those found sounds, and how self-conscious they were of the process, you know, the fact that there's like a Quasimodo track where he's talking about hunting for records, and just like talking to the record store clerk, and, and uh, and having this really awkward exchange where the guy is just like, no, we don't have any of that, you know, um, and uh, and and I think that that was a really good reference point. You know, I don't think it happened very consciously, but it, it was just like a natural. Uh, just approach to just like yeah you know just kind of work with these grooves and write things on top of it and kind of build off of it and and, um, and it was definitely sort of coming from that place but there was also I mean it's funny that you mentioned 80s because I almost feel like my ears are kind of dead to that in the sense that I, I've been so immersed in that decade and the 70s as well that I guess it doesn't really sound like 80s to me anymore it just sort of sounds like what I listen to but um, uh, but the aesthetic is, is definitely there and I think that kind of what I got from that is that there's a lot of I feel like it's it's one of the last decades in music that uh, had this really unabashed romance or, or this really sort of whimsical quality to it that you see in a lot of pop culture and you get in a lot of coming of age films or, or a lot of albums like like Hounds of Love for example you know it's such a, a unbelievably sentimental record um, and and it's it's really tough to sort of see those human qualities in a lot of music now you know it's I think a lot of people sort of want to approach things sarcastically and or, or, you know just sort of coming from this place of observation but you're sort of afraid to get into it and I kind of feel like well you know it's it's the song you should that should be the you know the, the dramatized notion of whatever it is you're feeling you know and and um, I really like that there's a lot of records that, that are very unapologetic from that era.